We announced a partnership with the Global Coalition for Adaptive Research in February of 2022 to bring a revolutionary, first-of-its-kind clinical trial for patients with glioblastoma to Australia. GBM Agile is designed to rapidly evaluate new therapies and connect patients with global research expertise. I traveled to the U.S. for Brain Cancer Awareness Month to accelerate our efforts in getting trial sites open in Australia. I met scientific experts and leading researchers working on the trial, as well as doctors and clinicians working closely with different drugs used in the trial, and others working with patients currently on the GBM Agile trial in the U.S. One of these people was Dr. Tim Clausey, one of our scientific advisory committee members and lead principal investigator of the global GBM Agile clinical trial. I asked him why we need to focus on glioblastoma. GBM was chosen as, uh, as, as the tumor to go after for GBM Agile. One GBM was there, but it could have been another adaptive trial. It could have been one of the other brain cancers, but you know, it's the most common brain cancer. GBM Agile does a couple of different things. I think the first thing that it does is it's a perpetual trial. So you don't have to start up and shut down, start up and shut down. You're continuing on throughout the time. Uh, you have this great opportunity for patients. Patients have multiple therapies that they may be chosen for. The great thing about GBM Agile is as it goes through its process of adaptive randomization, it selects the best drug for the patient in that setting. I think that's a huge value. So the, the speed, the efficiency, Having to use less patients overall to get an answer and getting more answers are all the reasons why GBM Agile really is, uh, for me, the best trial to be moving forward for the last time. Did you know 90% of drug candidates following clinical studies failed during phase one, two, and three clinical trials and drug approval? That means typically only one out of every 5,000 drugs makes it to the market approval stage. Drug development is expensive. The average cost of developing a new drug is estimated to be between $314 million to $2.8 billion. I spoke with Dr. Alan Olvera, president of Olvera Consulting, Inc., and consultant to multiple biotechnology and pharma companies on the effectiveness of the GBM Agile trial. It seems to me that this is one of the best design consortiums going after a really unmet medical need, period. Uh, they brought really are bringing together the best in the world in, in clinical neural oncology. And they've come up with an, an understanding exactly how to run a clinical trial in, in, in brain cancer and glioblastoma is different than maybe other oncology areas. Mm -hmm. and, and these people have been, devoted their lives to it and so they really understand the the details and exactly how you want to run these trials because they've probably participated in trials that were designed by companies and other things that were not quite optimal for mm -hmm. glioblastoma. So I think that's a big factor and just the fact that you're, you've got all of these sites, it just feels like this is where you want to put your drugs if you're going after glioblastoma. And okay. I think it's actually very cost effective for the companies and, and such as well. They know they're going to get high quality science, they're going to get the best investigators, and they're probably and because of that efficiency, mm -hmm. they're going to get it at a very cost effective. All of this should translate into more and more drugs for glioblastoma. GBM Agile has been progressing rapidly in the U.S. The trial was officially opened in 2019 with one investigational arm. Two more arms have since been added. Excitingly, arms four and five are expected to be added in late 2022. I met with Dr. Meredith Buxton, Chief Executive Officer of the Global Coalition for Adaptive Research, an organization comprised of some of the world's foremost clinical and translational science investigators. Here's what she had to say. Well, I think we've realized that the, the cost of drug development is just too high and it's not a sustainable model where it's costing billions of dollars to bring one drug to market. And then you layer that in with a rare disease that's not had a lot of success in terms of treatment options. And it's, it's not viable. Companies are not gonna be interested in participating in this space and patients need better treatment options. So if you take a trial like GBM Agile, which is uh, faster, cheaper, more efficient, more targeted, it really lowers the bar to participation for companies. And so it makes it a lot easier for them to think about developing in this space, which of course is beneficial for patients who need better treatment options. 
Uh, we are in um, over 45 sites around the world. That includes the U.S. and Canada and Europe, and we're hoping to be in Australia soon and China as well. And just, I think that we've really um, been so pleased at the level of interest and engagement from the scientific community, from the research community, the pharmaceutical companies, the patients, and so we've been pleased that our enrollment has been extremely robust during this period as well. So that only helps patients uh, get the answers to whether or not these treatments are beneficial quicker. With no change in survival rates over 30 years, brain cancer hasn't received the same national attention or industry attention as many other prevalent cancer types. Glioblastoma is considered one of the deadliest forms of brain cancer, with a median survival of 15 months. It's also considered a rare disease. Here the experts share their thoughts on the GBM Agile trial and the outcomes for those affected by this deadly disease. So GBM Agile will only improve outcomes if there's a better drug. If there's something out there that works, um, we're just allowing for multiple shots on goal and to be able to do it in a very efficient way. But we have to have something that works. I think it also provides hope for patients because there's the opportunity to get in there with a variety of different drugs. They know that they're involved in this. They know that they're helping not only themselves potentially, but those in the future. So I think all for all those reasons, you know, that's that's really why we want to move forward with GBM Agile and make it work well for patients. GBM Agile is now a five or six year enterprise, uh, which has really taken off in the last year or two. Um, now it enrolls some large percentage of the number of GBM patients in the U.S. who are going on to phase two clinical trials. So that's efficacy trials. I mean, the buy-in has been great. So the buy-in has been from the patients, which is of course the most important, uh, but also from the clinical people, the clinical trialists, um, the doctors, the neurologists. Um, they're, they're all buying into the idea that being able to do multiple drugs in a series uh, with, without having to redo the trial and start mm -hmm. over again that the basic design of the trial is, is something which was frankly quite foreign to the, to the oncology community. Well, we really want to be able to provide the patients in Australia with new and better treatment options for their disease. And so even having access to investigational therapies that could be beneficial is of value to them. So our hope is to work with the community and the scientific and the patient community there to bring up the trial as quickly as possible to allow patients in that country to have the access that patients in the U.S. and other parts of the world have.